Let's say I put a ninja in front of you and asked you to assess him or her. Could you fully assess that ninja's skills in a matter of days? Someone proficient in dozens of fighting styles and spycraft and fieldcraft, a master of infiltration? Well, the Note 20 Ultra hopes to infiltrate your wallet and not unlike that ninja, it has many skills. I've been tasked with assessing its capabilities and briefing you. So, these are my field notes, week one. Hey, if any of these videos have helped you, if you've learned a little something, something if you've chuckled maybe at one of my bad jokes, please consider hitting us with that thumbs up, hit that subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when we upload new content. Everything about the appearance of the Note 20 Ultra says premium. Its mystic bronze shell oozes opulence, turning heads wherever I post. Its stature, well, it's a beast of a machine with IP68 water and dust resistance, along with Corning's new Gorilla Glass Victus, its toughest glass yet. But the device feels svelte in hand. It's tall. It's screen measuring a large 6.9 inches, placing it in no uncertain terms into phablet territory. On the front, you'll find one half of the stereo pair of speakers, which is also the earpiece. It's a barely perceptible slit at the top of the display as it was on the Note 10. Below that, you'll see a 10 megapixel hole punch camera, which supports face recognition. And below that, you won't see it until you activate it an ultrasonic fingerprint sensor. That's a good thing to have with so many of us wearing face masks these days. The right side of this beauty is where you'll find the power button and volume rocker. The left side of the phone is bare. The top of the phone is where you'll find the nano SIM tray, which also supports micro SD cards up to one terabyte, yay, expandable storage. Bottom of the phone is where you'll find another microphone, USB-C charge port, and speaker grill. And then we come to the S Pen. This year, it's on the left side of the phone. Fellow lefties rejoice. This is ergonomically ideal for us. Hashtag left-handers matter. Now, looking at the back of the phone, there's no getting around it. You're going to have a sizable camera module hump. I know people tend to make a big deal about these things, but I really don't get all the fuss unless you don't put a case on your phone. How many of you watching this don't put a case on your device? You rugged smartphone user who likes to live dangerously? Since most folk are going to put a case on the phone and those cases are going to generally sit flush with this camera module, it becomes a non-issue to me. Around that camera module though is that mystic bronze that I spoke of earlier. But this year, Samsung has added this haze effect to the finish, which keeps it from being a fingerprint magnet and gives it a satiny, soft touch feel. And underneath that bronze haze is a 4,500 milliamp hour battery, which supports rapid charging 2.0, meaning it will charge to 50% in 30 minutes. It also supports wireless charging 2.0, which means that you'll get speedy top offs wirelessly with any 10 watt or better wireless charger. And that's the superficial. Sure, it's beautiful, no doubt, but skills are more important than looks once you're in the door. You know that whole ninja infiltration spy analogy I started with? On to day two of my assessment. This display runs at up to Quad HD Plus and is Samsung's Infinity O type display, which will run at up to 120 Hertz and is HDR 10 plus certified. Let's be very clear. You're paying premium prices here. And just like I thought the S20 Ultra was one of the best displays on the market. I have to admit the Note 20 Ultra is giving me those same vibes. Every time I put the S20 Ultra down to review other phones, but then came back to it after a time, it never ceased to be a delight to my eyes. I missed it. 
and I was looking at some great displays on other devices. My only issue with this display is that Samsung makes that beautiful 120 hertz refresh rate available on the HD plus resolution and not the WQHD plus resolution. In other words, if you want that super smooth screen and scrolling, you can't use the phone at its highest resolution. Now, the human eye can only see so many pixels print. This packs 496 of them. And if I asked 100 people to tell me the difference between 3088 by 1440, which is the highest resolution, and 2316 by 1080, very few, if any, would be able to tell the difference as studies have shown that 2316 by 1080 is pretty much the limit at this size display that the human eye can discern. Anything above that is extra cost and effort with no real reward. But some folks may feel that if you're going to give us that resolution option and 120 hertz, don't restrict how I use my phone, even though it means less battery life. My phone's a peacock, you gotta let it fly. There are four cameras on this phone and they deserve their own review. Between the still and the video features, between the automatic settings and the new pro mode video features, there's a lot to unpack. The pixels on the front shooter are large, so they let in a lot of light which bodes well for your selfies, as you can see here. That large camera module on the back is so for a reason. The Periscope camera embedded in there enables some interesting tech, but let's go outdoors and experience this firsthand, shall we? So what I'm doing out here is, I'm basically I'm taking a picture using the zoom, the space zoom on this Galaxy Ultra 20, which unlike the S20 Ultra, it only goes to 50X instead of 100X. Uh, but as you can see here, this is a city block, pretty long, and I'm taking you through the steps from 5X zoom to 10X, 20X, 50X. So you can see what it looks like. Here at 50X, even all the way down the block, you can actually make out the phone number on the side of this truck. So, not the clearest image. It is still pixelated. But, uh, the fact you can make out the phone number on that, it's pretty cool. Especially if you're a spy or something and trying to get those long range photos. So, this is what some of the pictures, colors look like on my morning walk or mid-afternoon, mid-morning mid walk. It's like 10, 11 a.m. So, here I am. It's about 80 degrees. Um, going for my midday walk. Um, so I'm gonna show you what this looks like. This is 4K, so I'm shooting in 4K, 24 frame, 21 by nine, which is cinematic aspect ratio. That's the aspect ratio you're gonna see your films in. Most of you will probably shoot 16 by nine uh, aspect ratio for the stuff you're gonna use at home. So there's that. And here's what that stabilization looks like. In the light of day, things look interesting and I'd love to hear your thoughts on the video stabilization I showed you on my walk, but what about night mode? Thanks to the main camera's large sensor, the Note 20 Ultra does quite well in low light situations. Here's a photo without night mode. And here it is with night mode enabled. These were taken at dusk, but it's when things get darker that the difference with the technology becomes more apparent. Overlooking the San Fernando Valley at night, this is what it looked like without night mode. And this is what it looks like with night mode turned on. One of the interesting things I picked up on was that even at night in low light conditions, the zoom produced fairly sharp images. Of note, unlike some cameras these days which have macro lenses, Samsung gives you a telephoto camera with space zoom. Now, 
In my testing of other cameras, I've seen where taking a photo with that camera's highest megapixel shooter, then cropping in, has provided better macro shots than some of those dedicated macro lenses. If you're truly a macro photographer, you're probably not looking at smartphones anyway, but if you're a casual shooter and looking to get a pretty close up of something like a flower or bug, use the 108 megapixel main sensor and then just blow it up a bit or crop in as the pros might say. I recently had the opportunity to preview the Tab S7 Plus, and the standout feature on that device for me was DeX, so I played with that here on the Note 20 Ultra. The new feature for 2020 is the ability to connect to Miracast compatible TVs and streaming devices. For me, that meant my Roku Ultra. What that does is give you a near laptop or desktop experience from your mobile device. Your phone becomes the brain and the monitor you're connecting to is your computer. I think that to get the most from this experience, you're going to definitely want to connect a mouse and keyboard to your phone. But if you're only pushing Netflix, you can use the phone itself as an input device on screen. Now, of course, what would a Note 20 Ultra review be without a look at the S Pen? especially with the new upgrade from a 42 millisecond to nine millisecond response time, placing it on par with the Apple Pen. Except this one comes with the phone at no extra cost. Paired with that 120 hertz screen refresh rate, writing on the Note 20 Ultra really is like using pen and paper. And you get new air actions, which allow you to navigate the interface with a wave of the pen. The S Pen and all it can do is also another aspect of the Note 20 Ultra, which deserves its own video, just like those cameras. On top of the new air actions, you will still get the things you already may be familiar with, like Smart Select, which can help you copy text you wouldn't otherwise be able to copy. <laughs> and the ability to turn content captured from your screen into GIFs, hard G, like I did with this clip from my Apple Band's Fortnite video. And if you're gonna have the ability to take notes, why not be able to access them from anywhere? That's a pain point some may have had to endure using Samsung Notes in the past, but not anymore. Not only does Samsung Notes now have a new folder structure, which mimics what you'd see on any modern computer, but it also syncs with Microsoft OneNote, so you can access your notes from any device. Well, you will be able to do that. Samsung says that functionality will come to users sometime later this year. The Note 20 Ultra is indeed ultra premium. Almost everything I can think of is thrown into this phone and at $1,300, I'd expect that to be the case. For Note lovers on the cutting edge, I don't see where anyone would be disappointed. There's even more coming to this phone soon, which I haven't even played with yet, like Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, which arrives mid-September. There's so much more to fully journal for you, but I'm gonna look through them more fully before bringing them to you. We'll have more of that in an upcoming tips and tricks, and I'd like to do a video just on the content creation functionality alone. Promo, video, promo, audio. If you're gonna pay this for a device, it may as well do as many things in your life as it can. And quite frankly, it seems like this phone is up to that task. If you're thinking about picking up a note, go ahead and check out reviews.org, the website. Let's see, I'm so all turned around here. Go ahead and check out reviews.org. And we have research, information, tons of it, piles, goo gobs of it, about the latest rate plans uh, that are going to meet your budget requirements and help you decide where this phone is gonna go. And if you have any questions or comments about anything in this review that I didn't touch on, 
anything you would like to see me touch on for future videos about the Note 20, uh, tips and tricks, use of the S Pen, Pro Video Mode, Pro Audio Mode, anything, the Xbox Game Pass, whatever. Go ahead, leave it in the comments. I'll check it out. I'm Tashaka Armstrong, reviews.org. See you on the next video.